Victor Osserman, as you said, doesn't have too many options unless he wants to sit around at Napoli doing nothing. So Chelsea are now resigned to the fact that the deal is off. Yeah, Victor Osserman, uh, according to our colleagues at Sky Italy, has now agreed to move to Galatasaray on loan. Just a few months ago, Victor Osman was tipped for a nine-figure move to some of the biggest clubs in the world. But a few days ago, he was announced a low move to Galatasaray, which has proven to be super controversial in the football world. So let's go over how this happened, why this happened, and most importantly, what Victor Osman's future could look like. Osman's journey to joining Napoli was nothing short of exceptional. His football career started back in Lagos, Nigeria, playing for Ultimate Strikers Academy. Years later, he would end up finding himself in the Under-17 squad for the national team, where he impressed enough that VFL Wolfsburg were interested and he made the move. He was signed to the first team, but he would spend considerable time in the reserve side before breaking into the Bundesliga. However, game time wasn't super abundant for a 7-year-old Victor Osman, so he moved on loan to Sporting Charleroi all the in Belgium. After six months, he signed permanently and really polished his skills, scoring 12 goals in 25 games. It was Charleroi that he got the game time he needed and grew his market value up to 13 million euros. And in the 2019-20 season, he signed with French team Lille for 3 million euros. Victor Osman only spent one year in France, but it was a good enough season that saw him make his flagship move to Napoli for 70 million euros. If we begin back in the 2021-22 season, Victor Osman was making his climb to the top of European football scoring 18 goals in all competitions that year, and 31 goals in all competitions the very next season, winning the Serie A Golden Boot in the 2022-23 season, and being a staple in Napoli's title-winning campaign. I just love his passion for football. Most players these days show no passion. He's got all it takes to be an all-time great player. Osman was the main man at Napoli and partnered with some of the other attackers at the club. They were some of the most potent forwards in the entirety of Europe. But there would be numerous problems that Victor Osman would face in the 2023-24 campaign. The beginning of the season treated him fairly well, scoring a few goals here and there, but it wasn't on the pitch that he would find issues. After a scoreless draw against Bologna, Osman was substituted 5 minutes before full time. As he approached the bench, a visibly frustrated Osman berated Garcia, Napoli's manager at the time, and loudly asked why they couldn't play two strikers since they were trying to win the game. In that match, Osman also hit the work and missed a penalty which in response to that, the official Napoli Club TikTok page posted the following two videos. Imagine pissing off one of the best strikers in the world to make a TikTok joke for those with 12 year old humor. Most of the world scratched their heads and wondered what on earth would prompt Napoli to troll their most popular player, let alone in a way that some saw as racist. Things at the club for Osman got increasingly worse when in match week 8 of that Serie A season, Osman contracted a hamstring injury which sidelined him for a month or so. After that time when he came back, his performances started to dwindle ever so slightly, only scoring one goal before he had to ditch the Napoli team to go play in AFCON. When he did come back, his form was a bit better but his public relations with the club and the manager were absolutely horrendous. So Osman and his agent were certain that he was to make an exit from the club this summer, or else he would be sitting out of football until at least January. So he had to make a decision, but where was he to go? Well, despite being one of the most recognized talents in world football, his transfer options were incredibly limited based on the fact that his release cost in his Napoli contract was priced in at around 130 million euros. And there were only a few clubs around the globe that had that kind of cash to spend on one single player. Initially, Chelsea and PSG were the most interested. However, as PSG progressed through talks with Napoli and Osman's representatives, what they realized is that they have to have either Gonzalo Ramos or Rando Colomuani move on from the club, otherwise they won't be able to afford Osman's wages on their books because of financial fair play and a bunch of other nonsense. Additionally, Napoli are notoriously tough negotiators, so there was no budging them on the huge price tag they put on Osman. There was a lukewarm offer from Arsenal, but they didn't want to spend all that money either. At this point, it's pretty close to the end of the transfer window, and Saudi Arabian club Al Ali came forward and proposed a deal only worth 80 million euros for Napoli. And Osman himself will be receiving around 40 million euros in wages for each season he played there. It seems like a great deal, but there was one thing that held it back. To begin, there was no buyout clause in the contract, so initially Osman wasn't interested and the deal fell apart. So with 15 hours left in the European transfer window, Osman had been deregistered from Napoli's squad, meaning that his future was in the hands of Chelsea FC and his agent. Chelsea was ready to pay the 130 million euros for Osman, but on the player's side, he wouldn't nearly get as much out of the deal. At Napoli, he was earning nearly 12.5 million euros per year, while Chelsea were only willing to offer around 4 million. So negotiations immediately broke down. This user sums it up perfectly. 
Chelsea saying Osman's wage is unreasonable while splashing $400 million on some unproven players is ridiculous. Subsequently, Victor Osman got rid of his agent for him not securing the Chelsea deal and rightfully so. You could probably guess that the transfer window closed by now, so without a club, Osman was left to his last option, Turkey. Are reporting that Napoli have given the green light to victim Osman's low move to Galatasaray. He really didn't have too many other options because at Napoli, he's been told by the head coach Antonio Conti, you're not in my plans. Of course, I think he will be the biggest star in Turkish football now. Until the end of the season, he'll be on contract at Galatasaray. This move was a shock to world football and he'll probably be one, if not the best player in the Turkish first division. But what is the ultimate end goal for Victor Osman? Well, he'll have to play until at least January. Considering he scored 26 goals in one season in Serie A, I think he's going to do some damage in the Turkish Super League. Playtime is also fairly abundant for him. You only have to share his minutes with Mario Icardi. And if they had to pick one, the choice is obvious. The good news that comes out of this deal is the fact that he agreed a new contract with Napoli until 2027. The best part being that his release cost was reduced significantly, down to 75 million euros. So my guess is that he'll play until January and once that window opens up, I'm suspecting that either Chelsea or Arsenal will swoop in and sign him at a cutthroat price. Obviously in the short term, this situation is not ideal for Osman, awesome especially at 25 years old, he should be trying to play at the highest level possible. But I believe that down the road, as bad as it is, getting out of Naples will pay off tremendously once he secures a bigger move. Realistically, he's only going to play a few months, no? I'd imagine he'd get bought out in January. So with him joining the Turkish League, his role in the club will look something like this. But before I get into this, if you've watched this far, you might as well drop down below and hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out. Thank you. He has historically favored a strong, physical forward who can hold the ball and bring others into play as well as be a consistent threat in the box, much like Didier Drogba during his time at Chelsea. So we can expect Osman to play a slightly similar role, especially when it comes to being a target man. Osman is around 6'1", so he'll be expected to play a favorable role in aerial duels. Hold the ball and link up play with the midfield and the wingers, so Osman's work rate and speed will be crucial in leading the press from the front, putting pressure on opposition defenders and forcing the mistakes. But that doesn't distract from the fact that his main job is to score the goals utilizing his pace, strength, and finishing in order to fulfill this role. Victor Osman is expected to be the centerpiece of Galatasaray's attack. So let me know in the comments how you think he's going to do this season, and I'll see you in the next video.